guys, in case you're new to this channel, my name is Hamad Benesha. I'm the founder of undoit.ca. In this channel, I talk about MacBooks, MacBooks repairs, everything to do with MacBooks. I'm located in Toronto, Canada, downtown next to the Sin Tower. And I have been in the business for over 20 years. I'm also an Apple certified technician and I only fix MacBooks, nothing else. So if you haven't done it yet, please don't forget to subscribe. Thank you. Well, hi guys, uh, today I just want to make a quick video uh, about a MacBook Pro. Uh, 15 inch uh, 2019 I received this uh, MacBook Pro no power only 5 volts and um, at first I looked at it looked pretty clean I suspected the CPU uh, because it was stuck at 5 volt and then I measured uh, you know all the power the 13 volt was there you know the 3.3 um, was there but it was still it would not still uh, no power up so I spent some time on it uh, I will show you what the problem was so I, that's why I wanted to make a quick video a uh, very clean board on both sides and uh, let me show you what the problem is or what the problem was and how I uh, managed to fix it and then I'll turn it on and you'll see um, so let me plug it in here to power you'll see as you can see stuck at, stuck at 5 volt okay so the user um, uh, I asked the user sit down there was no liquid damage anything like that which is uh, believe, totally 100% believable because the board is so clean. I mean, it's probably without his knowledge that uh, a drop of liquid came in. I'm sure uh, there's no way he could have known. So anyway, I, I only figured it out when I put it under the microscope and uh, there was a broken trace on, the, on, on one of the CD3200 3200 chips, which uh, created a 20 volt that, that's needed for the MacBook to turn on. Okay, so uh, let me show you on the screen how I fixed it was no, no 20 volts so most likely the problem would be one of the you know the four chips the CD32 these two over here these two over here so I started to measure the surrounding uh, the resistance and everything of each chip and then when I came to this one over here let me make it bigger I noticed one of the uh, one of the resistors was missing signal there was no signal going to it okay and it's um, started to look deeper on the, on the microscope I noticed a bit of discoloration, like very, very subtle. It's very hard to tell. And uh, so I decided to remove it. And uh, when I removed it, I noticed that the pad underneath was gone, completely gone. So I had to replace the, um, the resistor. And uh, because the pad was so gone, I had to... Um, you, you will see in a second, I will show you on the screen, the, the board. But I had to, um, to attach this resistor because they're connected anyway as you can see okay so I attached both together this this pad underneath under uh, pin number one was completely gone on the R on the resistor R3109 completely gone so there was broken trace um, so I, I put a new a new um, resistor connected those two together and then I jump a wire because it was missing it was a broken trace I, ju I jump a wire here to to this capacitor as I will show you in a, in a second then the signal came back the power came back I was about to power up this chip, which in turn uh, give a 20 volt, okay? So I already put half of it. Let me see if I can uh, show you. You can see the resistors over here with a broken trace. One of the resistors, the pattern is completely gone. So I had to join both here. Okay, I haven't plugged in the wire yet. So I'm gonna show you the it is still stuck at 5 volt. Oops, where is the charger? There you go. See, still stuck at 5 volt. Okay, now I'm gonna jump the, you know, the the second part of the wire. And we'll, t we'll test it again. Okay, so. I need the microscope for that. Uh, and angle the camera so you can see what I'm doing. Yeah, okay, I guess you can see that there. Okay, perfect. So let me.
Okay. So now let's try it again. Let me move the camera properly again. Okay, so let's put in the power. Let's see if it turns on. Let's see if it turns on. I should get 20 volt. There you go. It's turning on. The MacBook is on. So now we're gonna plug it in back to the to the case. See if I see something on the screen. Okay, let's do that quickly. Okay, we're just gonna put we're just gonna put a couple of screws so the board doesn't move. So again, if you have a MacBook liquid damage or MacBook doesn't turn on, make sure you watch that video, pop it up on your screen. And if you're looking at anyone in Canada, you can send it over, just watch the end of this video for the instruction and what to do and how to do it. Okay, so. Let's turn it on. Let me plug in this. Okay. I just need the screw for the battery, and I will test it. See if. Uh, comes on okay so let's plug it to power again see on the screen okay so 5 volt 20 volt the fan is spinning do you hear the chime yeah it's on it's working Move this from the out of the way yeah problem resolved there you go I just heard it charging. There you go. Problem solved. So there was no need to replace the, the entire logic board. Um, thanks for watching. If you like this video, please uh, give me a thumbs up as usual. And uh, see you in the next video. The process is very easy. Whether you're looking in Toronto or anywhere in Canada, just visit andoit.ca. Click here to get a quote, or you can also click on the menu here, get a free quote, it's the same link. There is nine different categories, so try to select the one that best apply to you. In this example, I'm just gonna click on, my screen is black. 
and uh, the Satsuma screen goes black when I tilt it. So I can, you can either get a free quote online or you can also call if you prefer. Uh, for this example, I'm just going to click on get a free quote, fill up the form and just click on submit form. When you click on submit form, this is what I receive on my hand. And as you can see, we do receive a lot of requests. Uh, actually, 90% of our business is uh, shipped to us now from all over Canada. So you can rest assured that uh, we know what we're doing. Uh, so I read it, I analyze it, and then I send uh, an email with a quote, uh, with all the option to the client. And if you decide to ship it, you just click uh, here to select your shipping option, and then you'll receive a shipping label. As soon as your MacBook is fixed, you will receive an email with pictures showing your MacBook repaired, your invoice, and how to proceed with the payment by credit card. As soon as the payment is made, we'll send it back to you. Thanks again for watching, and I look forward to receiving your MacBook. If you like this video, click the thumbs up button below to let me know, share it, and don't forget to subscribe. See you in my next video.